Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Today, I would really love to wish everyone a happy Human Rights Day, but if I'm being honest, I think I can safely say that majority of us are not feeling that happy at the moment. And I think there's two reasons for that. Number one, our concerns about COVID-19. And number two, our continuous neglect or denial of our human rights. And when I say our, I don't mean mine. Um, I mean the poorest of the poor in our country, which make up a really sizable chunk of our population. And which of course is again racially skewed because of the legacy of apartheid. And when we analyze those two reasons, I think the really heartbreaking fact is that COVID-19 is terrifying. And a lot of us are not sure when it will end, how it will end, and who it will affect. But in a South African case, it's pretty easy to figure out who it will affect. The most vulnerable in our society are vulnerable socioeconomically and are vulnerable to this disease. And that's why when we discuss concepts like washing your hands, the vulnerable of our society might ask you, with what? Because for us, buying soap is a really common activity that we do every time we go grocery shopping. But for a lot of people, soap is a luxury, a luxury that no one can really afford to buy in bulk or to use 10 times more than they used to. When you tell people that make up the majority of our country to distance themselves socially, they might ask you, but how can I, when I live in a rural area, which consists of neighbors living on top of each other, sharing communal bathrooms, sharing communal taps. If you tell the most vulnerable in our society, just work from home, they can turn around and tell you, but how, how, when, when my work involves me physically being there, it involves my physical labor, it involves me physically cleaning someone's house or mowing their lawn. How do you tell the most vulnerable in our society to buy masks and gloves and avoid crowded areas when every single aspect of their daily life involves getting in a crowded space and masks and gloves are the last thing on a grocery list of the really vulnerable in our society. And I think that's what's really scary about this disease because people might say, ah, oh, but you'll recover if you get coronavirus, which is true globally. But the South African struggle is that our combination of HIV and AIDS, tuberculosis, diabetes, and our crippling healthcare system doesn't present a very good outlook for the majority of our, our population. And the really sad part about today specifically is that on the 21st of March, 1960, people marched against the unjust apartheid pass laws. They demanded free movement and they demanded way more than they were getting under the apartheid government. And it's those people's kids, grandkids, great grandkids, those people that marched, it's their lineage that now has to struggle and fight for access to healthcare, for running water, for assistance when it comes to food, And that is honestly the really difficult part about today because every person in our country was formally liberated in 1994. But I'm not really sure what is liberating about still living in an apartheid spatial planning environment. I'm not sure what is liberating about living from paycheck to paycheck and watching others stockpile for a disease that will not kill them, but will likely kill you. 
so if you have enough data to be watching this, then understand that you and I are the privileged and we are not the majority in our country. COVID-19 is an existential threat to the majority of our country, which is not you and I. TB's prevalence in South Africa, diabetes prevalence in South Africa, HIV and AIDS, and a healthcare system that is supposedly accessible to everyone, but is ridiculously underfunded and under-resourced. It's fair to say that an unmanaged coronavirus will devastate our country. So on the 21st of March, 1960, the Pan-Africanist Congress, led by Robert Sabukwe, organized a peaceful march against restricted movement, against the past laws. That was met with violence, police brutality, and resulted in the deaths and injuries of many. And the irony is that now, 60 years later, we must ask you not to march. We must ask you not to go out and continue as normal not to violate the restrictions of gatherings beyond 100 people, not to overcrowd malls or shops, not to go out in your numbers and buy everything off the shelves. We must ask you to curtail your right to freedom of movement in order to save the people of our country, to save them from a disease which likely will not kill you and I, but can easily kill the 50% of our country living in poverty, or the 880 people who are diagnosed with tuberculosis every single day. So it's Human Rights Day today. And I think more than anything, it's time for us to put humanity back into humans. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.